a subscriber by the name of Elliot. Uh, he said that he had come across a tuna can or a sardine can, looks more like a sardine can survival kit on Amazon and wanted me uh, to do a cheapest survival kit review on Amazon video. So that's what we're going to do today. So I got it here, I ordered it, I think it was about $12 and I have no idea what's in here. Actually, I took the sticker off there so that we could all be surprised together. So let's open it up and see, is this, <laughs> is this a legitimate uh, survival kit? They said something like 32 or 36 items inside, which is hard to believe. Um, I've not had the best of luck with these little tiny survival kits, but uh, you never know, let's find out. So it's sealed and that's what's nice. Uh, it's gonna be all waterproof, so you know, maybe it is a viable option here. So let's start at the top and find out what is inside of here. It is packed tight, I'll, I'll, I'll give them that. All right, first things first, what do we have here? We have, we've got duct tape. Uh, a pretty good amount of it, probably about 12 inches of duct tape. Is it quality duct tape? You know, because not all duct tape is created equal. Some of it is, uh, well, not as good as others, but it's pretty good duct tape. What could you use that for? Oh, well, you could patch a tent with it. You could um, secure something. Yeah, it's, you just can't go wrong with duct tape. I think that's probably a good feature. Next we have, it's a little sandwich bag. That's nice if you needed to, uh, is it big enough to put a cell phone in? If you needed, you know, a lot of us rely on cell phones for navigation and, and a lot, most of them are not waterproof. So I like that, that's handy. Also, you could use it as an impromptu canteen. Uh, you could put a little bit of water in there. I mean, it's hard to carry water. If you think about it, if you don't have a canteen, how would you carry water? I mean, you're gonna cup it in your hand? Uh, no, is it a lot of water? No, it's not a lot, but it, it's something. Um, I think that's a, that's a great feature. Okay, let's stick it on there. It's a little bit windy out here. Oh no, get out of here. All right, next we have paper matches. Just your standard paper matches. Maybe wooden matches would be a better option. These are a little bit fragile. Uh, when it comes to moist areas, but uh, better than none. I think that's probably a good option. I don't know that you would even get the wooden matches inside of one of these containers. It's very small. This is actually pretty. <laughs> it's a pretty, a pretty cool kit. Uh, we have a razor blade. Uh, razor blade. I mean, if you if you don't have a knife uh, and you, you need to cut something and you need to do maybe some first aid or dig something out or cut. I mean, that's a great option. I mean, pound for pound, it's hard to beat. Uh, capability of a uh, of a razor blade for just a man a bazillion different reasons. I actually one time uh, cleaned a fish with a razor blade. It's totally possible. We have in here a little bit of cord wrapped up in some like some green frog tape. Man, they spared no expense. That's the expensive stuff. This is a little. This is a braided cord of some sort. Looks like Actually, pretty good stuff. Could you use it to replace a boot lace or a shoelace? Possibly. I know there's, I mean, they probably say in the instructions that it's, you know, you could make some sort of an animal snare with that. Uh, good luck. I've never, I, I don't have a lot of experience making animal snares, um, but I know enough about animals that, that it's not, uh, it's not probably not an easy thing to do, even for experienced guys. But that's handy. Very small. Maybe they should have put a little bit more, it'd have been nice to have five or six feet of that, but uh, better than nothing. We've got two safety pins. Those are super handy. One time I picked a, or I fixed a, um, a backpack strap, a uh, hunting that had come unstitched. Uh, I had several of these in my kit. These are not very high quality ones. I mean, you can feel the spring on there. Is, there's a, they're, they're pretty cheap, but you've got a large one and you've got a small one. I have also read in survival books of guys saying that they've actually caught fish with these. Uh, I'd like to see that. I don't think that that, uh, uh, maybe, I, I don't know. I, 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 I'm, not, uh, I'm not thinking that that's gonna happen. Uh, we've got a tea light. A tea light, this is really great, good. My granddad, uh, he, was, uh, he, he always carried um, one of these in, a, in his hunting pack. 
And sometimes when we had uh, wood that was, um, you know, if you're hunting like in the fall and there's a lot of snow on the ground and everything is wet, you know, even if you have good matches, they, um, it's hard to get a fire going. You could take this little guy or a little broken end piece of a candle, put it at the base and put some, um, you know, put some wood and t tinder around it and that will burn a long time. Not to mention uh, having a little bit of light. I should tell you the story about my friend Charlie who got lost in a cave for five days. <laughs> That's a whole nother story. Uh, this is nice. This is actually kind of unexpected. This is brass snare wire. This stuff's actually kind of, is it really brass? Is it solid brass? I think it is. This stuff's actually kind of expensive. This is, oh man, I mean, if you need to repair, this would be a better thing to repair something with, to use it like a sewing, a really heavy duty sewing string uh, or wire or, man, uh, just having a piece of baling wire or something like that is, beyond handy. And they gave you, they give us quite a bit, quite a bit here. How much is that? It's a chance of me getting that out without tangling it. There's probably, there's three feet there, I'll bet. That's really nice, very nice. We have these little guys, what, what are these? These are, imagine these are fire starters of some sort. Well, let's wait till the end and we'll test those to see if they work. So uh, here we go, we've got redundancy. So we, oh, and they're wax, matches and they're wax coated. Uh, or they feel like they're wax, yeah, they are wax coated. Someone has dipped the tips in these in, in wax to keep the sulfur uh, and the igniter from getting ruined. That's, a, that's kind of a nice surprise. I like redundancy. When I put together survival kits, I always have at least two and preferably three ways to start a fire because I don't really trust these. I'll take. Uh, lifeboat matches, I'll take a steel or a ferro rod and I'll take a, a lighter, like a big, a big lighter. We have, um, you know, this is actually a pretty good kit here. We've got a big roll of thread here. Uh, is there a sewing needle? I mean, there's a, there's a lot here. I don't know, there's probably, I'm guessing, it could be 25, it could be 50 feet. Uh, of kind of a high tensile, how strong is it? High tensile sewing thread. Not super strong, but it is strong enough where you could, you could definitely fish with it and do, do, definitely do repairs. That's interesting that, that they've tripled up and doubled up on things. Double fire, uh, tripled up on cordage. This is some sort of a really soft nylon cord with like a bread bag zip tie on it. Um, and there's quite a bit here. There is probably, I'm gonna have it all tangled here. There's probably 25 feet on that as well. Very nice. What could you use that for? Oh man, sky's the limit. Nails, that's an interesting choice. Two nails. Um, what could you use the nails for? I don't know. You're not gonna build a whole lot with two nails, but uh, well, there you have it. Maybe to replace it, if you had a, a multi-tool and you need to replace a cotter pin or something, I've done that before with nails. They're really good for that. We have the tiniest whistle I think I've ever seen. Look at that. That's hilarious. Not very high quality. Is it loud? <whistles> kind of. Medium loud. It's not like a Fox 40 or anything, but it it is nice to have a whistle. Your voice doesn't carry very far, especially if there's wind. And if you get down, let's, you know, if you got down in a hole, you were, let's say you were backcountry skiing or something, guys fall down in tree wells, they die all the time. When search and rescue comes around, you know, after you yell for a couple hours, you lose your voice. And to have a whistle is, uh, that's something I always, always put in a survival kit. Here we go. This was, I was hoping this was gonna be in here. It's a heavy duty sewing needle. So this, in combination with the thread, is gonna give you the ability to fix lots of stuff. I mean, you could fix shoes, you could fix a tent, you could fix, again, a backpack or clothing articles that go bad on you. Very good idea. I, I like that. We have a, uh, of course, our just garden variety little oil-filled compass or spirit compass. Uh, the reason why they call them spirit, they used to call them spirit compasses because they would put alcohol in them, not water. If you ran water in there, they would freeze and they would crack. So alcohol, as we know, won't freeze. And it's, it's actually pretty good. It is reading, get away from the, I guess that's not fair, non-ferrous. Uh, it is reading the correct direction. I do know that that is true north. Let's see, is it correct? 
uh, yeah, with a little, it's not, not, it doesn't have a super bearing on there, but with a little bit of fussing around, it seems to work okay. I've seen worse than that one. We got a fish hook. Is it just one? Oh, nope, two. Yeah, you want to have a backup. <laughs> Break your heart if you were fishing and you lost your hook on a snag and you didn't have a second. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe a half a dozen with some lead sinkers. I mean, they've, they've got the room in there and it doesn't cost very much, so that wouldn't be bad. The bad thing about the, the tuna can survival kit is that it, you can't augment it. You know, once you open it, uh, it's, it's not going to be sealed. I guess you could tape it up. This here is a, oh, it's a pencil. Well, that is clever. It's a pencil with a pocket, kip, pocket clip, and it's even, it's made in Japan. So it's not, you know, it's not super, it actually feels like pretty good quality. Nice to have a pencil. One time, uh, or, or many times, I think I've seen, uh, we've had, we used to hunt in, or have big hunting camps. Um, our family was really into that. Uh, if someone were, wasn't able to get back to camp in time or was having a problem or needed to get information, having a pencil and, be, and a piece of paper being able to leave a note that say, I was here at this time or I went down this trailhead. I mean, you could take the thing and you could put it in the plastic bag to, and you could use the string and you could tie it there in a real obvious manner to, to leave a message uh, of where you went. Not only that, but you have the paper to, to help start fire. So we've got a nice piece of paper on there. Ah, I like the pencil. That's actually, that's pretty nice. I might keep that in one of my survival kits here. We have one of these guys. These are, we've all seen these before, kind of a credit card type survival kit. Quality-wise, ah, they're not great. Uh, there's not, um, not a whole lot you could do with this, but it does have a point, and I guess if you needed to scrape or pry something, you could do it. We've got uh, a saw there, and I've had limited limited success with those guys. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know that that's as handy as the razor blade, but I guess you could tighten a screw with it. You got an end there, you got a small measure on it. Don't have any idea what that thing is. Lanyard hole, it's all right. Well, there's something else in here too. Now remember, oh, here we go. We have an explanation here. So there are 11 things on this. There's a can opener. Okay, I see that, or right there, or right there, that's can opener. Knife edge, screwdriver, ruler, bottle opener right there. We've got a butterfly wrench. What's a butterfly wrench? Hmm, I don't know what a butterfly wrench is. We've got a saw blade, of course, a sundial. Who knows how to use a sundial? If I had to go out and to use this as a sundial, I would be a little bit at a loss as I don't, uh, I don't know how to do that. Two position wrench and lanyard hole. Um, so that's it. Not really any instructions on how to use anything, but there it is. Love it or leave it. We've got uh, two uh, zip ties in here, or not zip ties, but the uh, little bread bag zippy ties. Um, I don't know what these would be good for other than keeping your bread from getting stale. A couple of zip ties would be a better, a better addition to this, more useful, and they would curl around in there, and they would certainly fit. We have... Oh, signaling mirror. Uh, is that legitimate? Probably not. I mean, yeah, I, I mean, you could get some flash off of it, but without having the, the aiming hole in it, like a proper signaling mirror, uh, that would be difficult to use. I, I'd rather this be an extra five or ten dollars um, and and put a real signaling mirror in there and some of the other upgrades. And then finally, in addition to the can, we have a basic, some basic survival kit. You know, this is good just psychologically. Um, sometimes I, I have I've actually been lost. I've spent the night out uh, elk hunting one year and I, I wasn't, I was kind of lost. Uh, primarily, I, I couldn't get back in time and I thought, well, wandering around the dark is going to be um, is going to be up, my chance of getting lost or getting hurt was going way up. So what helped me a lot was uh, having a plan, having a plan and things to do to keep your mind occupied because it's, it's pretty scary. I mean, you hear things at night. It's, it, I was up all night, you know, kind of stewing and worrying about stuff because you didn't know what was going on. So having a plan and kind of having something to read and to keep your mind occupied is very, very handy. And it looks like there's some pretty good stuff in here. It's pretty basic uh, basic first aid kit or, or uh, survival kit stuff. Is there anything else in there? There's not. All right. So before we go, 
how are you going to strike these matches, these wooden matches is the question, because some of these, uh, you have to have the striker to do that, so I don't know if they would strike on a rock. Let me go grab a rock and find out if they work. Okay, so here's a rock, kind of coarse. Yeah, I don't know about that. So I guess what, maybe what they're intending, for us, intending us to do here is to use, can we use the striker on the back of the... Yeah, that's the problem with these. They're, they're just not very, not very good matches. I don't know. I think the only value that they're going to have is, uh, oh, there we go, we got it. Yeah, I was about ready to trash it. Does this stuff burn? The fire starter? Yeah. It's really windy right now, so this is, of course, you know, when you need to start a fire, it's either going to be raining or windy. There you go. You've got, and you've got two of them. I like the backup, man. You mess, mess up or you drop one or lose one to be able to have a, have a backup there is super handy. So I'm, what's my conclusion on this? I'm, I'm actually pr pretty surprised. Um, for $12, uh, something that's super, super small, and if nothing else, just to give you something to do <laughs> if you <laughs> broke down or got lost to, to have a couple things, you know, to give you peace of mind and uh, maybe to do some slight repairs and the whistle's okay. Um, but this is a great idea. I think it would be cooler. Maybe what we should do is to get a, an Altoid type of can, something that you can reopen. And, and I, I would choose a lot of the same things that we have here, only a better quality. Maybe better quality um, a whistle, uh, a real signaling mirror, and I don't know, maybe, probably a knife. I'd probably rather have a knife uh, than this. Something, maybe a tiny, tiny, like one of those itty bitty spider codes that are, you know, they're, they're kind of useless, but they're, at least they're a real knife that, with a real steel on them. But overall, it's pretty good. Not, not too shabby. So uh, that's it. That's my review of the uh, $12 sardine can survival kit. Uh, if you have ideas or different things you'd like to see me uh, review, let me know in the comments. Don't forget to click the thumbs up if you enjoy these videos. I think they're kind of fun to do. And uh, that's it. We'll see you guys on the next video.